scared of thunder? No. I like it. That's good, because there's going to be more of it. I brought you food. What are we getting to? Did you steal it? No, I bought it. Oh. And if we get caught, don't go making up any stories that I did. I'm in enough trouble as it is. You and your kid. You want me to go back, Sam? Shut up, Amy. They looking for me? Your aunt's got every cop in Iverstown peeping through keyholes. You won't let them find me. You always come running on me. Got nobody else to run to, Sam. The circus is leaving town tonight. Their train will go right through here. When it does, you just follow me. You run with all your might, and when you grab on, grab tight. Don't you worry about me, Sam. Shh, quiet. There they are. All right, kids. Unless you got wings, you're caught. All right, Martha, let's go. All right, miss. We'll take you on home to your aunt. Mr. O'Neill to see you, ma'am. Show him in. Mrs. Ivers will see you now. Good evening, Mrs. Ivers. Good evening. Good evening, Mrs. Ivers. I have good news. Martha... What about her? Martha has been found. I know. Well, it was Walter who was really responsible for Martha being found. He told the police where she and that boy, uh, Sam Masterson, usually go. Well, isn't that so, Walter? Yes, Father. The boy will be rewarded. Well, he's a good boy. And he's bright. If I could afford it, I'd send him... Send him to a school like Harvard. I guess I've mentioned it before. Many times. Yes, madam? Take the boy to the kitchen, Lynch. Give him some ice cream. You may give him a piece of cake, too. Go along. You must thank Mrs. Ivers, Walter. Thank you, Mrs. Ivers. You've lost your pupil, Mr. O'Neill. I'm sending her away. I know why you offered to tutor Martha. I know why you made Walter do his daily lessons with her. I know why you want him to live here. A scholarship for Walter, that's why. But I'm not a foundation, Mr. O'Neill. I don't care whether Walter drives a truck or goes to Harvard. Probably be a lot happier driving a truck. You are expected, miss. Oh, just a minute, miss. Uh, the name's Lon Dean. You'll tell Mrs. Ivers the name of the detective who caught her is Lon Dean. I tell her. I'll take your furs, miss. No. You'd better, miss. You know how she feels about that cat. I'll bring it up to your room. Your aunt is waiting for you. Close them, Arthur. Close them, Arthur. don't seem very sorry. I am. I'm sorry I was caught. No matter what you do, I won't cry. 
This is the fourth time you've tried to run away. Each time you were brought back here, no matter how far you got, you were brought back here. You don't own the whole world. Enough of it to make sure that you'll always be brought back here. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? Your aunt doesn't deserve such an attitude, Martha. There are not very many women who'd be as patient and as kind. And there aren't very many little girls who'd be as ungrateful. When will you understand that I'm doing all this for you? That I'm trying to wash the dirt and grime off you, make an Ivers out of you again? My name is Smith, the same as my father's was. Your name is Ivers. I've had it changed legally. I don't care what you've done. Your name is Ivers, the same as your mother's was before she was stupid enough to marry... Shut up! Shut up! How dare you! Shut up! You've still got his foul mouth. I won't let you talk that way about my father. Your father was a nobody, a mill hand. The best thing he ever did for you was to die. Kill you, kill you, I'll kill you! Stop, stop. It's all right, Mr. O'Neill. Go up to your room and get into some dry clothes. After you've had dinner, I want to have a talk with you. Late out. I'll go get my son. Good night. Stay. I'm upset. I want someone to talk to. Yes, Mrs. Ives. Lynch told me to sneak bundles to you. I thought you'd be hungry, so I sneaked the milk, too. She hates cats. She hates everything I like. A policeman came to my house this morning. He asked me if I had any idea of where you could have gone. My father said it was my duty to tell them. Your father. I didn't say a thing. No matter what my father told your aunt, I didn't say a thing. I'm cold. I've got to change my clothes. I'll leave the door open so I can hear you. My father says you're foolish. My father says that someday you'll have everything in the world. My father says that if we only had one little part of what you will have, I could go to Harvard. You're what? I could go to Harvard. The light! What happened to the light? They went out. I think they went out all over the house. There's a candle and mattress on the table near the wall. Oh, you stand still. I'll do it. Don't you think I'd better go up and see if Martha's all right? Martha will be all right anywhere. Your play. I'm afraid of the thunder and lightning. Draw the curtains. I'll go into change. Martha! Out of you and I'll break your nose. I won't say anything. Martha! Martha will tell you I won't say anything. What? Sam! You see, Walter, I told you they'd never catch him. Sam, button me up. I came to say goodbye. I thought it over, Martha. It's better for you here. I won't stay here. I hate her. All you gotta do is play smart with her. I'm going with you. Now you listen to me. I don't wanna listen. It's late. I gotta go. Let him go, Martha. If he's caught here, he'll be sent to reform school. Mrs. Ivers said so. They gotta catch me first. All right, Sam. If you won't take me, I'll go without you. I'll go off by myself. Okay, then let's go. I wanna run up to the attic. I wanna get a couple of things.
Hurry, Sam, or that old witch will catch us. We were upstairs. We heard a noise and we came down. We saw a man, a big man. He was leaving. Out of that front door he left. See, it's open. And she was lying there. And this, this was lying there too. I picked it up. Isn't that true, Walter? Isn't it? Is it, Father? Yes, Father. It is. Put it down. Put it exactly where you found it. Both of you better go upstairs. I'll phone the police. He was in the house, he saw it. Sam will never tell me. Yes, he will, he's scared. That's why he ran away after it happened. Sam will never tell me. Sam's scared. He ran away, I didn't, I stayed. No, no, he won't. Not Sam, not Sam! When the police come, you will tell them exactly what you told me. Do you understand, Martha? Yes, Mr. O'Neill. And you too, Walter? Yes, Father. You poor child. You'll be all alone in the world now, except for Walter and myself. But you needn't be afraid. We'll always be with you, Walter and I. We'll never leave you. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. Chestnut King looks like an odds-on favorite. That guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Chestnut King's a dog. He was losing races to cow ponies years ago in Tijuana. Well, what do you know? What do you know about that? 
How do you like that, sailor? Leave a place when you're a kid, maybe 17, 18 years ago, and you forget all about it, and all of a sudden you're driving along and smack all your own hometown up and hits you right in the face. <laughs> Sailor, come on, wake up. Where are we? In a small accident. What happened? The road curved, but I didn't. Come on, I'll get to put into Iverstown for repairs. Next time, I pick me a guy that don't fall asleep. Welcome to Iverstown. Well, maybe this time they mean it. Got anybody here to fix this wreck, mister? Roll her in. Ten more, you don't make it. That, five more, you don't. That, five you. Shoot. Ten more, you don't make it. Come How long will it take, Pop? Can't tell till we look her over. Come back tomorrow. Open game? Nope. Five more years of that. Four. Right back, little Joe. Twenty to ten, no four. You got a bet. Come on, Harry. Make four. Seven. You shoot, Joe. Thanks. Shooting twenty. Got it. Ten more, you don't make it. Then I do. How much will it cost, Pop? Won't know till it's done. Hey, now look, I want to know now. Take it someplace else. Welcome to Iverston. We interrupt this program of dinner music to bring you a special broadcast in the interest of the re-election of District Attorney Walter P. O'Neill. Hey, no, leave that on, will you, Pop? Ladies and gentlemen, it is with deep regret that we are forced to announce that Mr. O'Neill will not be able to address this Citizens Forum tonight. Mr. O'Neill was suddenly taken ill, but we are fortunate to have the best-loved civic figure of Iverstown the gracious Mrs. O'Neill here in the studio tonight to speak for him. Citizens of Iverstown, the issues in this election are simple. That's enough of that malarkey. Say, hey, this, uh, Walter P. O'Neill, isn't that the kid that used to live on, uh, Sycamore Street? His father used to be a school teacher. Yeah, that's him. You know him? Yeah, I used to. A little scared kid on Sycamore Street, and now he's running for the district attorney. What's the odds? On what? The election. No odds, no takers. This is a sure bet, mister. Going to be reelected. Going to be governor. And I'm making book right now that someday he'll run for president. Yep. Going to be whatever his wife wants him to be. Some gal. Who do you marry? You from this town? Used to be. You ought to know her then. Old Lady Ivers niece. Martha Ivers? Yep. Came into the whole works after the old lady died. Well, what do you know? What do you know about that? Martha Ivers. I don't know, you still look like a scared little kid to me. Hello, Gallagher. Hey, wait a minute. Do I know you? Sure. I'm the guy who tossed a rock through that window once. And you're the guy who chased me. If I chased you, I'd bet I caught you. <laughs> Come to think of it, I believe you did.
live here? Used to. Who runs this place? Lady, the name of Mrs. Burke. She's not home. You waiting for her? Just came back to get my things. I've been away for a while. I'm waiting for a taxi. I used to live here, in this house, 17, 18 years ago. I was born here. Don't kid me, you're older than that. Well, I didn't move right after I was born. Got one to spare? Got some more matches? I can get these. Got the time? Uh, it's a quarter after 11. I ain't that just dandy. And I've got an 11.30 bus to catch. You can still make it. Half the taxi doesn't show up fast. You know anybody who lives around here in the name of Masterson? No. Know anybody in town at all by that name? No, I'm from Ridgeville. Is your name Masterson? Mm -hmm, yeah. You mean you're just getting home after 18 years? Well, 17 or 18. You're just getting around to looking up your people. No, not exactly. I just happened to be driving through on my way west and got more or less curious, that's all. Well, good luck. What you gonna do? What do you mean? I mean about your people. Well, I don't know. Maybe nothing. Maybe tomorrow I'll go down to the courthouse and look up the deaths in the last 18 years. Can you do that? Yeah, I think so. Good night. The bus terminal. Please hurry. I've got an 11.30 bus to catch. I thought it was you, Mr. Masterson. Well, I'm glad to see you again. I gave you my last match. Want to lift any place on the way to the bus station? You talked me into it. You got my matches. Got a name? Tony. Antonia. Antonia Marachek. Ain't that a dilly, Mr. Masterson? Sam. Please hurry. The depot is just across the tracks. He's still got four minutes. You'd have made it if you didn't stop to pick up your chance. Might be able to chase it. I can get a bus back to Ridgeville tomorrow. Maybe I won't get a bus back to Ridgeville. Maybe I'll go someplace else. Maybe in another direction. Chicago or further west, maybe. Have you ever been out west before? No. I've never. And maybe I will. What's it like? Big. Someplace else. Do you drink, Sam? Yes, I drink. I'll buy you one. Okay. Too bad. Do you want me to check your bag in the station here? I don't know. I, I guess I want it at a hotel. You don't want me to take you there? Do you happen to be at the Gable Hotel? Yeah. Can I go there? It's a public place. Yeah. Tell the clerk that Sam Masterson wants a room for a young lady. She'll register when she gets there. Yes, sir. Thanks. Keep it. Classy. Blue lights, music, everything. A cafe. 
When I lived in this town, there were nothing but saloons. My father used to live in them. Mine, too. We're related. I'll have the same thing you have, if you don't mind. Scotch. I uh, take a plain water chaser with that when the scotch isn't so good. Two water chasers. Did you drive far? About 600 miles since this morning. You aren't driving anything tonight. Oh, my Stanley steamer's in the garage having her face lifted. Better bring us a couple more before curfew. I'll swap. That'll be two dollars. On me. Oh, thanks. Um, maybe you'd like to drink to finding your people. <laughs> no, my mother wouldn't approve of that. How would you know after all this time? After all this time, you probably wouldn't care, one way or the other. You talk awful cold-blooded about them, don't you? That's life. Is it a big family? No, it wasn't. Besides me, they're just the usual two people necessary to increase the population. Mother left when I was a baby, and my father probably drank himself to death by now. The other man I know talks cold like that's my dad. He's the most cold-blooded man in Ridgeville. Once he kicked me, it made me sick. I can guess why you didn't break your neck to catch that bus back to Ridgeville tonight. I probably would have got on and got off before it started out. Probably got the jitters the minute I got on. Anyway, it's gone now for tonight anyhow. There won't be another one until tomorrow night. And now I know for sure I'm not going to make that one either. Not the one to Ridgeville, at least. But I'm so glad you came to have a drink with me tonight. I was so lonesome, I... I like to have died. Have you ever been that lonesome? How lonesome is that? About as much as you can hold without busting open. Want to know how I got that way? Curfew. Um, Shall we go home? The, the reason I picked the hotel... Your hotel is, is really very... You read the hotel advertising on that when you had it. You're smart. Maybe you think I've been trying too hard to get acquainted. Maybe you have. Maybe you think that's wrong. Maybe it's too soon to tell. I wonder what you're thinking. I don't think you'll take up too much room in my Stanley steamer.